A mountain generally in scripture is symbolic. A mountain is a place of prayer, a place of divine encounter, a place of exploits. It is a place of transformation. It is a place of revelation. It could be a place where temptations are heightened. It is a place of sacrifice. It's a place where vision becomes clearer. So it is a place for illumination. Particularly is instructing is the fact that the mountain is a place where we meet God. I've also stated here that the mountain is a place for divine endorsement. It is a place for divine announcement. If you look at the scripture, you realize that many people who went through the mountain experience were always transformed. Their lives never remained the same again. Most of these people who went to the mountain, either at the point of going to the mountain or at the point of being at the mountain, these people will be devastated. Let's take our father Abraham. What took him to the mountain at this point? God had placed a very hard demand on him to sacrifice the very thing he cherished. I was sharing with people, I said, how did Abraham think? I mean, how did he feel? Especially the moment Isaac asked him that, here is the matches, or here is the fire, and here is the firewood. Where that is the lamp for the sacrifice. So at that point, Abraham was at the verge of losing everything he had ever hoped for. Take note of that. Let's look at Moses. As at the one time Moses escaped from Egypt, he had lost everything, especially the comfort of the palace. He made this journey, ran away. Or when he was also there on the mountain for 40 days to encounter God, after that event, his life wasn't the same again. He was completely transformed. He came down a new man. He came down with a higher level of glory. Because the mountain is a place of transcendence. And what does that say about the theme of the year? That this year we are praying for the faith for a higher dimension. For greater announcements. I've also said that the mountain is a place for angelic visitation. An encounter. Abraham had an encounter with God through the angel. And through that particular encounter, the all the time kind of declaration and promises became endorsed in a spectacular way. Oh, Abraham, for obey me this much. In blessings shall you be blessed. Your family shall be blessed. And every other thing God says to him. His faith was tested. He willingly accepted, he obeyed that, and he was blessed for it. Let's look at the man Elijah when he was going to Horeb, the mountain of God. I remember I said many of the people who had this mountain experience are people who are either devastated or at the point of devastation. Elijah, after the encounter at Carmel with the threat of Jezebel, he was giving up on life. He looked behind, he looked through his life. Oh, after all these years of serving God, is this the way my ministry is coming to an end? And he cried and well. And he said, Lord, I think I've had enough. What am I still doing? Just kill me. I don't want to live again. I'm tired. God strengthened him. And he walked 40 days. And had an encounter with God on the mountain. The same person who wanted to die, the same person who wanted to give up, came back charging, fulfilling his life purpose, anointing kings, executing the judgment of God. He was no longer afraid. What happened? Because he had a mountain top experience. What about me and you? Many of us in life, because of what we face as a family, in relationship, financially, people are at the verge of giving up. They are tired. Especially when it appears as if your work with the Lord goes unnoticed by heaven. 
when there seems to be no corresponding or proportionate kind of blessing, considering what you've put in, people can be discouraged. But don't forget the word of God says that those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Elijah waited on the Lord. His strength was renewed. Moses waited on the Lord. He was transformed. Jesus himself went to the mountain. Remember, he had just told his disciples, look, I'll be handed over. I'll be crucified. Yes, he spoke about himself. But humanly speaking, it wasn't easy for him. So he also needed some level of encouragement. And that's why it was important that this matter be discussed. Moses and Elijah came to remind him that he was the fulfillment of the Lord, the prophet. And the apostles also needed to see his glory so that when the darkest moments of their life will come, they will remember that this man is not just ordinary, that there is a higher dimension of him that is being veiled by the reality of the cross. And what happened in the case of Jesus? I said, the mountain is a place of generosity. Jesus freely underwent the cross. And by so doing, we ourselves. What is generosity? Abraham was generous. Jesus was generous. In both cases, God spoke. So Abraham threw an angel to Jesus. First of all, through the prophet. And then the voice that came from him. And what did the voice say? The voice that came for Abraham came to endorse the covenant God has already made with him. In the case of Jesus, God came to reaffirm the fact that this person here is his son and must be listened to. So that's why I said the mountain is also a place for endorsement and a place for announcement. And by reason of this gathering, beloved friends, I want to let you know that your faith will not fail you. God will announce you, you have been endorsed, especially when it requires certain documents to be signed for you to be appointed. Even in your absence, this will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. When, one thing I do know is that when heaven says yes, no man can save you. When it said yes to the liberation of Israel, no matter all that Pharaoh did, he couldn't stop the voice of God. That's why my people say, Normally, oh, where well, the protesters will say, Oh, Jehovah, oh, Jehovah, the Catholics will say, Oh, Messiah, and Yana would have gone, Oh, Yahoo, you'll be so. I can't hear your soul on the mountain. The voice of heaven speaks louder than the voice of the earth. The voice of the Creator resounds louder than the voices of created things, all of them put together. So what God says you will be, that you will be. And so I speak to you right here now, that by reason of this gathering, there is an endorsement for you. The Word of God says, I know the thoughts and I know the plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope to bless you. And could you now see how these themes are quickly knitted together? Because if you look at the theme of tomorrow, it quickly said, Lord, help me to be generous. Abraham was generous and was blessed. Jesus was generous and was blessed. I shared with you yesterday the story about the young woman who sent me a photograph of a baby. What did she do? She was at the verge of death. When she came, she didn't like someone who had the hope of living. Just that I had preached in their parish that the mercy of God can reverse every situation. So he said to me, but I'm not really coming that my situation be reversed. But I just come so that I, I came so that I might do one thing. Then there is something I have done that will be as a testament, a living memorial in the presence of God. And he handed me over 3,000 and said, Father, this is the seed of my life. In case I die tomorrow, that this will be something that will be speaking for me. And that reminds me of the generosity of the woman of Seraphat. 
It was when Elijah asked her for a favor of a meal. He said, I don't have anything. All that I have is the little dough of bread and terrible of blood. I'll just eat it. And then after eating it, myself and my son, we will die. We will eat it and then we will die. Elijah said, no, you will not die. Just bring me first. For as the Lord lives, a jar of oil will never run dry. And so this young woman gave that seed and said, Father, even if you don't want to take it, use it for charity. But at least let it be counted in heaven that I have done something good. Even though before now my life has not been the best. And of course, I told you yesterday how the whole story ended. By the time I collected the seed, the same oil, the same effect of oil that you know, blessed it on the mouth, anointed her. As I was anointing her, I was even afraid. I hope this one is not the last anointing, the attic one, okay? And the rest of the thing. But immediately I did that. The Lord said to me, ask her to just pick that booklet, the nine days booklet, do the novel, and let's see if I'm God. If she will agree to do what I'm asking her to do, then on the last day, her menstruation will be done, which has ended for the last nine months. And there it was that she went, struggled the first time, couldn't complete the novena, the second time couldn't complete the third, was at the fourth time. I encouraged her. And as she finished the menstruation return, two weeks later, flesh began to grow on the skeleton. Six months later, the viral load in her system went down. Six months later, she said, Father, your girl is becoming better now. And she was now beginning to talk about looking for job. And by three nights ago, she's sending me a picture and telling me not just that God spared my life, but God has also used me to bring new life to the world. What does that say? Generosity has the power to open up new doors. It can reverse a dead situation. Yesterday, I had another testimony which I still want to share with you to let you, I'm preparing you, I'm launching you into the month of March. We are talking about the month of revival and rejuvenation. God brought Isaac to life because practically he was like someone already dead. God brought Jesus to life. And in your own case, I don't know what you have done. Uh, I don't know what has died. I don't know the things that are going bad in your life. Get ready because every damage in your life is about to be repaired and restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are entering into the month of March. And we call it the month of rejuvenation. It is my prayer for each and every one of you. Who is that person? My spirit, someone, someone's tears right now is drawing me. We are on Zoom and you are also on Facebook as I speak. From where I start, I can't even know who is weird. The Lord says I should speak to you. I should speak to your heart. I should reassure you that he will show up in your life in this month of March. In fact, he said in the first seven days, he will show up. So let me go back and say what I wanted to say. Yesterday, a testimony came in from the area that is close to Kubwa. And that is Kagini. Yeah. I need to share this testimony so that my spirit will rest. This testimony did not happen to a Catholic, but actually happened to a non-Catholic. I'm trying to make some efforts by tomorrow to get the photograph of those who were involved. A father of two died, and the family was crying. And uh, one of my ministers was called upon. Because 
she has been helping coordinating people from that area bringing them counseling for prayers so when she was called upon it happened to be the period i didn't want to talk to anybody because i was in prayer and she ran there the only thing she had in her hand was the oil by the time she went there the whole family was crying the person had already thought fell And so when she arrived, she didn't know whether to start consoling them for what has happened. But then she was moved. And she requested, I said, well, it is true that the person has died, but then can we just do one more thing? And I said, please, sister, whatever you want to do. He said, please, I'm a Catholic. I know you are not Catholic. You are white garment. But will you accept an oil that is placed by a Catholic priest. They said, yes. So by the time they went in there, of course the person was already stiff. The teeth was completely joined together. So, she just placed the uh, anointed the cups and asked, please, can you try to open the mouth? So they had to go look for some knife and then fork or spoon and try to force a job with bubble. And when this was done, she now put some quantity of the oil in the mouth of the dead man. Not up to two minutes, the person sneezed. Not up to five minutes, the person became warm. As I speak, the person is back to normal life. That's the covenant. It's a covenant. It's not just a feta oil, it's a covenant oil. It is about a covenant, a peculiar covenant peculiar grace that God gave to it. He said to me, son, I have given you this as a grace that will announce you and announce your ministry. And whenever you call upon my mercy and you pronounce the word Epheta, I will honor it. I will hear you from them. My grace and my mercy will always speak. Two testimonies came in. The second one from the same person. A lady in their church, of course, I said Michael's Catholic Church, Catholic, I'm talking about here, was already booked for CS. The very moment she was to be taken in for the CS, she arrived with the oil and just placed the oil on the womb of that woman. And lo and behold, not quite up to two minutes or thereabout, the baby was born. And that was the end. What can God not do? Revival. It's a new one. I'm using this testimony to launch you into this new one. So that you know and be reassured that God is still in the business of touching lives. All that God wants. I'm not saying that that is the only thing he wants, but I think God, in every age, did men who will stand in the gap. Friends, as we stand in the gap, not just for ourselves, but for the whole world, especially for members of this spirit, even those who, on account of their situation, by reason of their environment, or who could not afford to have been data, they want to be here, they want to come and hear the word of God, but they don't have the data to be here. We stand in the gap for them. I have always said that distance is not a barrier. I want you to get more serious as we enter into the month of March. Let's assume that in the first 10 days, 11 days, we are just launching, we are, we are taxi. Now we will start flying on a very high altitude. 
wherever you are, please try to get our sacramentals because we are going to be very specific. Try to get our sacramentals. Wherever you are, try to get our sacramentals. We have our reasons for doing this. Try and get them. Because any day, the Holy Spirit can come and then give us, drive us in a different direction. And when he comes, and when he gives the instructions, we will follow him. So once again, thank you for believing and thank you for being there. Thank you for trusting God and his power to serve. I believe that he will do that which you have been expecting. God is here to change our lives and our situations. And don't forget the blood of the Lamb will speak for you. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, let your blood speak on behalf of our families today and in the new month. We call for the ministry of the blood of Jesus to speak deliverance to the foundations of our family, to the foundation of our towns, our kindreds. By the power of the blood of Jesus, <laughs> Let every unfavorable record be cancelled that has been working against us and our families in Jesus' name. Please, Amen. I don't know who is responding. You need to be asked. You will have two or three more people who put the amen because it's a collective um, thing we are doing. By the power in the blood of Jesus, let every satanic kingdom working against our destinies and families be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We Amen. use the blood of Jesus. <laughs> We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to possess everything concerning us and our families. We spread through the blood of Jesus by the power of his chivalry. Support every member of our family. We sprinkle it upon our business places. We sprinkle it for healing and for deliverance and for protection in the name of Jesus Christ. We call for the power in the blood of Jesus Christ to speak in favor of every member of our families. Let the precious blood of Jesus clear every hindrance, stopping our miracles and blessings. Let the blood of Jesus speak supernatural promotions in our places of work, promotions and elevations in our ministries, in our various fields of endeavors in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let the mercy from the blood of Jesus locate every member of our families. Let the fullness of the memories of the blood of Jesus affect every department of our lives and our families. Father, let the blood of Jesus at the fire of the Holy Ghost right now paralyze and blind. Every demon that has been commissioned to attack or to frustrate us, let it paralyze the activities and cripple their millions and their programs, the programs of evil men and women who are jealous of our destinies and our positions that God has given to us in the name of Jesus Christ. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ to dethrone every evil spirit or evil person reigning in our positions of greatness. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cancel the effects of infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Amen. Jesus Christ perfect all that concerns us and our families. By the power of the blood of Jesus, let all, all invisible flow of contamination of causes in our family line be destroyed now. By the blood of Jesus, we stop Amen. the flow of these causes upon, uh, upon subsequent generations. We use our lives and our sacrifices to declare that these causes will no longer flow in our lives and families in Jesus' name. Amen. Every power blocking the blessings of our families in the heavens, on earth and under the earth, we command them to submit and to release and to give way in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the angels of our families be empowered by the blood of Jesus. For the Eucharist itself is called the food of angels. And therefore, we strengthen, we empower, we recommission the angels, our guardian angels, the angels of our families, with the blood of Jesus, so that they will be full of strength to pursue and recover our blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank yes. you for the merit of the blood of Jesus that has revitalized us. And in this month of our rejuvenation, we pray that the blood of the Lamb will revive everything that has died, will restore everything that we have lost. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare the month of March will be a very special month of blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that the month of March will be a month of transformation in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh, ocean of mercy, soak us in the precious blood of Jesus and cleanse us of our sins. Jesus, speak and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. 
Lord, make us instruments of your love and mercy. Open our eyes to the secrets of giving and give us the grace to help those in need. Lord, help us to be less judgmental and let go of hearts easily. Heavenly Father, bless us and make us blessings unto others in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray concerning tomorrow's uh, theme for prayer. Lord, we pray that you help us to become more generous in our dealings in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you Amen. are God, and only you can do what no man can do. Therefore, in your name, we declare that whether the devil likes it or not, reproach shall die in the name of Jesus Christ. Respect, Amen. honor, and dignity shall arise concerning us in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Amen. evil identity that is called reproach, we declare that enough is enough. For the word of God says, affliction will not rise a second time. And the word of God insists, for all your shame, I will give you double. Let this be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we need a double blessing to compensate for our years of reproach, for our years of lack, for our years of stagnation. Father, we pray for Effector Global Ministries in a very special way. We pray that it is time for you, O Lord, to settle us. And therefore, we pray that you raise up pillars, benefactors, benefactresses, and generous partners for this ministry and vision, especially those who will help us to get to the site, the permanent site, where we could stay and cooperate in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, we shut the mouths of our adversaries. Those who have been taunting and mocking us. Lord, we pray for the miracle and the testimony that will shut their mouths and make them to confess that you are the living and true God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You delay stagnation, disappointment. You syndrome of nearly but never. Qualified but rejected. That has been reproaching our destinies. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, catch fire and never you rise up in our families again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My Father, my Father, turn away every reproach in our lives that has made us laughing stocks. Turn them away and turn them to respect in the name of Jesus Christ. Every yoke of reproach Amen. running in our family line that has overshadowed our lives break by fire and be consumed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, by your divine power, destroy every garment of shame and reproach, covering our destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let the miracles that belong to the generations of our father and the generations of our mother that has never manifested, now manifest doubly in our own generation in the name of Jesus Christ. What our fathers, what our parents would not achieve, we will achieve them double in the name of Jesus Christ. My Amen. Father, my Father, the God of the Feta Global Ministry, we pray for a touch in the areas of marriage, in the areas of our businesses, in the areas of our health, in the areas of our careers, in the areas of our finances. Lord, let your hand descend heavily upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, are you not the one that moved the woman with the issue of blood to move from reproach to respect? Before now, she was a smelly woman. But after an encounter with Jesus, she was publicly recognized and honored. Lord, who are those my children who are suffering and dying in silence? Whose pains are so deep that they cannot even share it with people? Lord, arise. Let this reproach burn by fire. Lord, for all your secret tears, let there be a corresponding public endorsement and announcement of your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. As your word does say that the God who sees all that is done in secret will reward us publicly, so says your word. And therefore, O oh Lord, for all your, our little efforts, our little sacrifices, those secret sins that we sow, the prayers that we make, the fastings and the arms give us. All that we try to do in the service of your kingdom, let this be approved. Please let this win heavenly approval. Let it be recognized and endorsed by heaven. 
and by so doing they will be announced in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary.